Hi friends, this is Angelica. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing how I put these ornaments together. They are completely inspired by one of my favorite craft channels. That's Irene's DIY Addiction, um, Irene DIY Life Diaries. She is so fabulous to follow. She and so talented. So I seen a video that she'd made two years ago and um, she used some paper clay and molds and baubles. So um, I thought I would do my own spin on her ornament. So that is what we're going to do today. We're going to jump right into the clay and I like to use um, cooking spray in my molds to release the paper clay. So I sprayed a little bit on a plate. I used a brush that is designated only for this um, process and I just brushed that oil really lightly onto the snowflake that I'm going to be putting um, clay on top of. I'm going to be using several molds throughout this video, but this first mold is from Redesigns um, by Prima, and this is their Snowflake Jewels mold. The clay that I'm using is hardy, super lightweight modeling clay. It's a paper clay, I believe. It dries. It's an air dry clay. Um, you can get this at Walmart, or not at Walmart. You can get this at Hobby Lobby, which is where I got my bag from last year. It was $18.99, but I actually just looked it up on Amazon to see if it was available on Amazon also, and it is, and it is at $8. So fantastic price. That is definitely going into <laughs> my shopping cart because I did use almost my whole package in this project. And this clay, when it says it's super lightweight, it is, I mean, super lightweight. I am was actually shocked when I pick up picked up the package at how light it was. So it's perfect for an ornament like this because it's not going to weigh the ornament down and the cap's going to have a really easy time keeping the ornament on top or, you know, connected to the cap. I'm almost done putting the clay into the mold and I'm just going to push it firmly down to make sure that that snowflake impression is really nice on the top of the clay. Then I'm going to turn the mold over and just slowly um, manipulate the clay out of the mold. Playing with clay, this isn't my, you know, like go-to for crafts, but um, after watching Irene's video, I did go and buy a mold and this clay. I started with a different mold and wow, that that was a really hard mold to work with. So I found this snowflake on Etsy and um, thought I would give this one a try. And this is actually a really easy one to work with. So once I have the snowflake out, um, I did need to put a hole in the middle of the snowflake so I can put it on the top of the ornament. So I used the ornament to take that hole out. And now I am using a Liquitex to, um, that's what I'm going to use as my adhesive. So I already primed my ornaments off screen. I used my favorite bonding primer by Pintart. And I'm using pla a plastic ornament from a four pack that I bought at Hobby Lobby. And this specific size is a 3.94 inch and it is plastic. Um, I don't think I would do this with glass just because these ornaments are so time consuming. I would probably cry if I dropped one and it broke. So I brushed the adhesive onto the ornament and then also onto the back of the snowflake and I made sure to be pretty generous on the back of the snowflake especially with those little the little pieces like the little snowflake arms because those are really delicate areas of the snowflake. So um, just I put a lot of adhesive behind them and then uh, I'm going to tap the clay not really hard because I don't want to ruin the impression that is um, on the clay. So I'm just using my finger just to tap all of the air that's underneath the clay completely out so the whole snowflake is lying flat on the bobble. And that's what's great about working with clay is that you can make it round. I have done a lot of ornaments with die cut paper, but die cut paper you cannot manipulate like you can with this clay. So um, this is such a fun project to do. This next mold that I'm working with is an IOD mold. This is Blitz. Um, I believe this was a special release from last year. I'm 
pretty sure that you can find one. I didn't go look, but I'm pretty sure you can find one in a shop on Etsy. Uh, there's several sizes of snowflakes in this mold, and I have used the smaller snowflakes. I used them last year, but I had not used this larger snowflake, so I thought I would try it out with the um, paper clay, and I loved it. It is so beautiful once it's on the ornament. I mean, it's just beautiful anyway, but um, I have used the Prima Snowflake for the past two years. I, I've made this ornament for the past two years as presents, but this is the first time I've made this these ornaments for my tree. So um, I thought I would give this big snowflake from the IOD mold a, um, a try. And yeah, I'm so glad I did because the details in this snowflake is so beautiful. The size of the snowflakes a little bigger than the Prima snowflake. And it's just so easy to work with. I was, my daughter was standing next to me when I was doing these. So she got all the little circles I was uh, taking out of the uh, snowflakes. And she made a little, a little gnome and she wanted you all to see it. So this is her little gnome. Um, Vera usually, if she's at home while I'm crafting, she's usually next to me or in the next room crafting right along with me. All right, so we're moving on to the last mold that I'm going to be using. This is another IOD mold. This is the Trimmings 1 mold. And you can see I am putting the uh, cooking oil in the mold, but you can see that there's powder dusted in some of the other um, trims on this mold. I, uh, a lot of people like to use cornstarch to keep the paper clay or keep the clay from sticking in their molds. And I did try, I tried the cornstarch and it did not work for me. And that's why um, I just decided to use the cooking spray and I love it. So, you know, that's, I know everybody has their own ways of doing things. And um, if you don't know how to get clay out of your mold, I definitely recommend trying a little bit of the spray and it doesn't make the clay wet. So it does, you do have a really nice um, impression of what, you know, the design inside the mold. And I forgot to mention, even I did just show it on screen. Once I get clay out of my uh, package, I do wrap it up immediately and tape it closed because it is, it does air dry and it air dries pretty quickly. So to keep your clay from not getting stale at all, you definitely want to make sure that that, that package is closed tight. So I wrapped the trim around my bobble to make sure, well, I wanted to see if it was gonna fit all the way around. It's a little small and that's fine. We're gonna be able to add a little bit more of the trim to the ball, to the bobble. And I am working with a different size bobble um, for this ornament. This is another plastic ornament and it's 3.27 inches round. Um, I used the Liquitex again to add the trim and I took my time with this process because I wanted to make sure that that trim is in the center of the ball, uh, bobble, excuse me, and it's also not crooked. Um, it does take a minute or two for that adhesive to kind of hold the trim in place. So I just kind of played around with it until the trim didn't move, like, because I wanted to put it on the cup so I can make the last of um, the trim with the clay, but I needed to make sure I can put that um, bobble down and not worry about the trim, you know, kind of sinking down because there was a lot of adhesive under the trim. So once I knew that the trim was gonna stay in place, I did do um, one full shape, kind of like the, it, it looks like a fish shape or like a little spaceship. Um, I cut off the excess, used my fingers to push the, the um, little pieces of clay that was sticking out and now I'm just going to glue it. I'm going to stick it into place like a little piece of puzzle and um, kind of pinch the clay so you can't tell where the seam is. All of the trims in this mold has have a beginning and an end so it makes it makes it really easy for you to make a trim as long as you um, need it to be and I really appreciate that. This is again like I said this is not my go-to craft medium. I don't even know if this is a medium, but I don't usually play with clay. So uh, to be able to play with something I'm not really comfortable with and it be really easy for me, I truly appreciate that. 
since I had that mold still on the um, on my desk and I had some clay left over, I just decided to do one more trim. I am using a larger ornament. I'm back to the 3.94 inch round bobble. And this, I thought this was gonna be pretty tricky because um, it has a lot of detail. This trim has a lot of detail to it, but super easy to get the clay in and get it out and get it wrapped around the, um, the bobble. Excuse me, and this trim's kind of big, but luckily because the clay is so lightweight, it, it, it did not weigh the ornament down at all. And um, it also is really easy to keep growing that trim as long as you need it to be. So I just made another, um, like another small part of the trim, figured out where I needed to cut it, added the adhesive and just tucked it into place. And I just pinched, um, you know, like where the beginning or the end, where the pieces meet, I just kind of pinched the, that clay together to close the seam up. Super easy. I mean, if I can do it, you can do it for sure. Once I had all of the pieces glued in place, I, I think I did 10 bobbles in this sitting. Um, I had them all sitting on coffee cups and stainless steel cups that we use when we go in our backyard. Um, that's how I had the bobbles dry and I let them dry for about three hours. I was a little concerned about these um, ornaments that I did with the trims. I was wondering if the uh, clay would shrink after it dried and really show the seams, um, but it did not. So I was pleasantly surprised to see that. I was hoping for that and I was really happy to see, to see that it did not shrink. All right, so now it's time for painting. And I will admit this is not my most favorite part of this ornament. Uh, the painting does take a while, mainly because the, the clay has so much detail and dimension to it. It's really hard to cover it all with paint. So I had to do two layers of paint and it took about 10 to 15 minutes to paint each ornament. Um, I did start with a pretty cheap brush to see, um, well, I just started with a cheap brush. I was gonna brush the paint onto the snowflakes. This is what I've done before. And then um, do the bottom with a, with a sponge. Um, last year I did decide to skip this whole process and I went and bought some spray paint and it worked wonderfully and I really wished I could have spray painted these, but it's 30 degrees outside. So, and my son's car is in our garage, so I had to hand paint them. So I used the paintbrush on the snowflake for this first one and then just used a little sponge dauber to add the paint to the, um, bottom of the bobble. And then I decided to try out a different paintbrush that I have, a nicer paintbrush. Um, I'm, and I'm also using DIY paint for this next um, ornament. This is actually one of my favorite colors um, in the DIY paint collection. This is Bohemian Blue. And the paintbrush that I'm using also is a DIY paintbrush. Uh, and um, I should say Debbie's Design Diary DIY. It's her paint line. And this is one of her brushes. I splurged and bought it a couple months ago. I think it was like $25. And it did not help. <laughs> it did not help me in this process. So I ended up going back to my cheap brush. And then again with the sponge dauber. Now one, th I, one thing about this paint, um, it is super pigmented. So it did take me a while to clean that expensive brush and get all of the paint out of it. So um, the last color I'm using, this is the um, Folk Art Chalk Line and I'm using French Linen. And I'm gonna try one last brush. I'm trying a black sponge brush to see if maybe this will help. And no, it. I ended up again, just going back to the paintbrush. So for me, if I have to be inside the house to paint these ornaments, I would just stick with um, an inexpensive paintbrush, but if you can go outside and, um, spray paint, if you got a spray paint area, um, I definitely recommend spray painting these ornaments or at least, yeah, spray painting them because the, uh, snowflakes are just 
so um yeah they're just hard to um, get all of the clay covered and I did do two coats on all of the ornaments and there still was a lot of white showing but I just let it go because I was going to be distressing them so I'm going to be using wax so I just hoped that the wax was going to cover the rest of the white I was I didn't want to fuss with it anymore so now you see what all of the ornament colors are. We're gonna move now to the distressing part. And I did do a couple different levels of distressing. So this first ornament, all I'm going to do is add wax, wipe the wax off and call it done. So I'm using black wax. I usually use stencil brushes to add the wax, but my st stencil brushes are, they're getting pretty old and beat up. So um, I did just toss them. And instead of going to the store and getting more, I uh, decided to use ink blending brushes. So I am a paper crafter first and I have tons of these brushes so I can blend ink. And I thought, why not try them with wax? And you know, they worked beautifully. So um, I saved myself a trip to the store and um, these brushes are super soft. So they, they just put wax onto the ornaments and then I used my hands to um, kind of push the wax into, into the ornament because when um, I dabbed the paint onto the um onto the bobble it does leave a little teeny bit of texture so just pushing the wax with my fingers into the ornament kind of emphasizes that texture I used a rag to buff off the excess wax and I just buffed it until uh, it was a color that I really liked and the distress especially around the border was um really nice uh that's all that I did. I just put this the ornament aside and moved on to the next one. Now I'm going to get a little bit more intricate <laughs> with my distressing. So I'm starting with the black wax and I really am pushing that that um, brush into the snowflake because I really wanted to cover up the white areas. I did not want to go back for a third layer <laughs> of paint. So I used... Um, I also have a really small brush that you saw me use on the first ornament. I use that really small brush to get into the little grooves too, to get that black wax into the grooves. Um, and then the second brush that I'm using, I put clear wax onto it. Um, I did a, a quick coat of clear wax onto the ornament and then used my hands to move the clear wax all over the black wax. They kind of mix together. And um, again, used a, rag to buff off the excess wax and I just kind of played around with the rag until I got the ornament to a color that I wanted it to be but I still I don't know I, I liked it but I wanted I wanted to do more with it my plan going into this video was just doing um just really quick distressing because I've done distressing before in my ornaments on this channel and um I thought maybe I could just show um, how to just do it quickly. Well, <laughs> that did not happen. It happened with the first ornament, but as usual, I can't just say this is okay and move on to the next one. So I um, decided to um, paint the ornament white again. <laughs> I added baking soda to my little ceramic bowl um, and white paint, and I am... I am actually not trying to cover the whole ornament with the white paint. I'm just um, putting texture. Really, that's all I'm doing is just adding texture uh, because that dark wax, the, the black wax is going to completely change the white paint. So that baking soda is going to give a nice scratchy surface to the ornament and it's just going to make it a lot easier for me to get the distressed look that I was really wanting for these ornaments. So I'm putting the black wax back onto the ornaments. And uh, I should mention that putting the first coat of wax on and then doing the white paint, that actually made it a lot easier to camouflage the um, little pieces of the snowflakes that I wasn't able to um, paint. So I did the black wax all over the ornament. And now instead of using 
um, the the light gray brush that I used on the first ornament to add the clear wax. I'm just gonna I'm just using my finger. I put some clear wax on my craft sheet and um, just picked up some clear wax and dabbed it all over the ornament and just smoothed that out with my hand. I love moving the clear wax with my hand. I just feel like I have total control of what the clear wax is going to do because it's going to pick up the black wax and kind of move it around and even everything out. Now I used um, the DIY wax in my previous um, ornament video and I'll leave a link here on screen if you haven't seen that video. But I got a lot of comments um, of uh, from other people who use the DIY wax and they did say try using the clear wax first and then the dark wax. Um, I did not do that with these ornaments just because I knew I wasn't going to be keeping the wax on um, on the paint for very long at all because I didn't want like total grungy look. I just wanted there to be um, almost like just a little bit of dirt settled into the snowflakes because I want these to look really um, old antique like so um, next time when I'm using the wax I probably will do the clear wax first and then the dark wax just to see how that works if it makes the wax um, easier to work with if that makes sense I hope that makes sense so I'm done with this ornament I really like how this turned out uh, I'm going to put that aside now here's another ornament that is painted with the French linen paint I have already waxed this off screen I thought my camera was on but it was not so it does have some black wax on it and um, I had done this before I did the blue snowflake ornament and since I had put the white paint on that ornament I thought hmm why not try that on this one too? Um, so I um, dabbed the baking soda slash white paint all over this ornament just to make it um, super scratchy, super grungy. Uh, didn't really know where I was going with this. This is definitely a trust the process moment. Um, even I was a little hesitant you know about this about this time I was like I don't know if I should have done this but it's too late to go back so we're just we're just going with it and I can tell that I had thought I was finished with this ornament because you never see me holding an ornament in my hand while I'm painting it I always have them on dowels but I did have this on a dowel and once I was done waxing it I took it off the dowel because I thought I was done so I was I don't know, I just thought I could paint it and not make a mess, but that was clearly wrong. I had paint all over my hands, um, but I just kept it off the dowel. So now I'm doing the wax and I got wax all over my hands. Um, but again, it that's just crafting to me. My hands are always dirty. This is going to be the last time I'm going to be able to do ornaments for um, a week or two because I am going on a trip and I need to let my hands kind of get better because this really dried out my hands having all the glue and the wax and the paint on my hands it really dried them out so I did give myself a manicure after this and I've just been keeping um, lotion on my hands at all times um, but I, to me it's worth it I love I love like right here putting the wax all over the um, ornament I would much rather do that with my hands than with a brush so um, I got another rag out. I am buffing off that wax and I am just loving how this turned out. This was my favorite ornament. Um, but do you think I would just, you know, leave it as it is right now because it looks pretty lovely to me? Oh, no. Nope. I still wanted more. So I, uh, I pulled out. Um, oh, well, first of all, let me compare. So um, these are both French linen paint. Um, it's just the bigger one. I just did the wax and moved on to, you know, the next, the next ornament. But the smaller ornament is when I added the white paint, more wax, and now I'm going to add some rub and buff. Um, this is, this tube you can find in the acrylic paint aisle at your local craft store, or you can get it on Amazon. Uh, you just need the tiniest little bit. So I just put I, I barely squeezed the bottle and put a little bit on my craft mat 
Um, I do have a stencil brush. Um, this is my last stencil brush, but I hadn't used it before. So I uh, just put a little bit of the rub above on the stencil and then I dab that st stencil, uh, the brush several times on my craft mat just to get any chunks of the rub and buff off of the stencil and I brushed the ornament with it. And that just gives that really pretty gold sheen to the um, ornament. And then I used my finger to add the rub and buff um, on the border. And I believe this color is um, gold, gold leaf. Let me check. I have it right here. It is, yeah, gold leaf beautiful. There's, there's a few different colors you can pick from. I think that there's three or four different golds. Now I'm going to go on to my very last ornament that I'm going to do on screen. Like, like I said, I did, I did, um, 10 ornaments in this sitting and I will show most of those, if not all of them in the final pictures, but this ornament is the easiest. And this is actually my like tribute to Irene's video because she did one pretty much in the same color. I think hers was maybe a little bit more navy blue. Um, and then she used silver, like a silver dust um, that she brushed over the, um, over the snowflake. But I'm going to use the rub and buff again with my finger. And again, I'm using the gold leaf color. And I am making sure, this is so important, make sure that the finger or whatever you're using to add the gold leaf with um, does not touch the bobble because it will leave just little, the littlest speck of gold. And then, you know, it just you're either going to have to touch it up with paint or, you know, kind of figure out what to do. I, I wanted this to be the chalk paint and the gold leaf. That was it. I wanted nothing. I wanted no accidents, no distressing, just um, a really simple and pretty ornament. I just love how this turned out. I, I'm not even going to seal it because um, sealing the Bohemian Blue does change the color. And since that is a bubble that's going to be going on my tree, I know it's not sealed. I know to properly wrap it up when the time comes to put it away. I am going to seal the rest of my ornaments though and I'm using Big Top After Show which is the top coat from DIY. And um, I picked this one because it has a really pretty satin finish. If you want your ornaments to be more shiny, you definitely um, want to go with a high gloss varnish. But this um, satin sheen that the big top leaves is just, it's beautiful for this style of an ornament. So that's going to finish up these ornaments. I will leave a link down in the description to Irene's um, YouTube page. I highly recommend heading over to her um, page and checking her out. She is marvelous. I'm telling you, I can just binge on her videos. She can take an old crayon box and make a Christmas village out of it. Um, I just love DIYers like her. They're just so inspiring. So these are the final pictures of the ornaments I made. Um, I I had a lot of fun making them. They, they did this was a two day process. I did the, um, the mold and the painting on day one. And then I did all of the distressing on the second day. So, uh, just to let you know what my time frame was making these ornaments, but, uh, that's all that I have. Please leave a like, please subscribe, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Tell me what you think of these ornaments and, uh, I'll be back shortly with another video. So I'll see you then friends. Take care.